Hi, welcome to the Israel First television program from our studios in Jerusalem. Great to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us today, wherever you're watching across the world. We appreciate your company uh, as we look at what's happening in the news and we look at the bigger picture of what's happening with Israel compared to what's happening with the world uh, with these last days that we're living in with the One World Government, New World Order and all of that. And we're going to look at how that all fits together. Well, the program today is a special dedication. Uh, we're doing a, the program in memory of a very good friend, um, Richard Barrett, who very sadly passed away recently. And uh, so we're dedicating it to his memory. Uh, Richard was very pro-Israel. He, he was a great support to uh, Natalie and myself and the uh, Israel First television program. Uh, along with his wife Christina, so uh, please remember uh, Christina and the family in your prayers and uh, thank you so much for their support, we are so grateful for their support and it's because of uh, people's support that we're able to do the programme today, so it's in Richard's memory. Now, uh, one of the things uh, I've been talking about uh, on previous programmes was the control system, the New World Order, the One World Government would have to be uh, in control uh, to enable it to function properly. Well, let's we, today, as I look at the as we look at the news, we need to kind of bring it down to Israel. How does it affect Israel? Uh, this control and basically the control is done through the government, the Israeli government. Um, so we're going to look at how the Israeli government is bringing in more and more control into people's, into the citizens of Israel, into people's lives, how this is growing daily and is becoming a huge thing, Natalie. Uh, for example, let's just throw a th few things out. Uh, for example, police powers, surveillance, uh, cameras, facial recognition, computer control of governments and businesses, censorship of the news, food prices, alternative DNA, altered food, climate control and the promotion of electric vehicles, climate change, etc. So these are things that are being foisted upon the Israeli people and are, uh, we're going to have a look at, we're going to focus a little bit now on the news and how it's actually outplaying. Well, the first uh, big news is the Jerusalem Post reports on the National Security Minister Ben Gavir, who seems to be regularly in the news, Natalie. He's the Nas National Security mm -hmm. Minister in Israel. And the Jerusalem uh, Post reports that he, Ben Gavir, will have private representation in a court case which involves the movement for quality government in Israel in a court case uh, against him regarding the independence of the police. This is very important that the, uh, every, every part of the government needs to have some independence and particularly when it's security and the police need to be independent of political masters. Now, the National Security Minister, is there's a legal case which will be happening to protect the independence of the police. And it's being fought by the movement for quality government in Israel. And so it's very important they win because if we lose, if we start to lose the independence of various public gov um, government bodies, um, then they just become what, like a dictatorship. That's what Israel will become. So it's very important they win. And so the... Uh, case concerns a proposed law in the Knesset which would dangerously place the Israeli police under political masters. Now, let's just have a recall as to Ben Gavir because uh, he's in the news regularly, but what's, what's he been up to? Well, uh, first of all, he wants to increase administrative detention, that's holding suspects without charge, incarcerating individuals without charge, practically indefinitely, with, and uh, the evidence without... Um, against them is withheld and they can be subject to torture. That's the first thing. This administrative deten detention is something he's been promoting. Number two, he's also, Israel's police may now search homes for weapons without a search warrant. Uh, the new law illustrates how Israel's law enforcement uh, is rapidly expanding uh, and is of great concern to Israel's freedom fighters. The new legislation 
uh, allows police to search private homes without a warrant if there's reasonable sus suspicion that the home contains illegal weapons or That's weapon, it. So or if weapon only parts. So suspicion, here we go. Yeah, they, they just, uh, they, uh, that's all they need. Um, and uh, number three, uh, that's, this is Ben Gavir. Implementation of a 2,000 strong National Guard, a gendarmerie under, guess who, under Ben Gavir. And uh, the cab this already had a cabinet resolution uh, and the cabinet have um, tasked uh, this new force with tackling disturbances and restoring government where needed. So it's at cabinet level and, uh, you know, this is something that will be going through the government legislation as well. And it's a great concern to freedom fighters because suddenly we've got this uh, search without warrants. Mm -hmm. We've got this new force that's um, waiting for legal authorization. Uh, the National Guard will deal with special emergencies, whatever those are. I know, uh, which is like an extra body. Right. Which... Entirely unnecessary because there's already the police and there's already security services in Israel. So we do not need another force. This is entirely unnecessary uh, and is extremely um, concerning as to exactly what they're going to be doing. Now, maybe give a bit of also of the history of Ben Gavir, because he didn't just arrive on the scene. We know some history from mm -hmm. him from a long time ago. Right. Yeah. I haven't got so much of his history. But from history. your book, from your book. Yeah. I, I don't have that with me, Natalie, so... No, I know, but you can explain. Okay, we know that Ben Gavir has also some history and not always very good history. And now he's coming and take a lot of control in the government, which again, he, he come from somewhere. He's not just like, he didn't have a good background. Right, right. Okay, but mm -hmm. I, I think it's important to know mm -hmm. because he's not somebody who has a very amazing background and come to the rescue. It's, it's the opposite. So people need to know that when Ben Gavir arrived, he has a history of things that was shady before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, from from memory, without any notes, Natalie, <laughs> uh, Ben Gavir was involved with protests for the um, for for the Jewish for Jewish movements. I uh, was very involved in that. And uh, he was uh, before the courts a lot of times, so many times, well, and he used to represent himself. And they said to him, then you might as well become a lawyer because you're spending so much time representing yourself in court. And so that's why he became a lawyer. But I think you're right, Natalie, but I think it's also very concerning what he's up to now, and that he's risen to this position yes. suddenly. And so we need to keep our eye on that and also on all the different powers. And as I say, said at the beginning, it's part of uh, the bigger picture is that for the new world order, for the one world government to exist, it will have to control the population. And it has to do that uh, at the moment through the local, through national governments. And uh, this is part of that. Now, uh, one of the concerning things has been censorship this is another part of the control censorship of the media and a Likud member of parliament has called in the news for Israeli news channels to be silenced by the government uh, Likud MP Tali Gottlieb told communications minister Shlomo Kahi minister it's time to silence it's unbelievable really silence the broadcasts of channels 11 12 and 13 she did not specify, which again is of great concern, what offences she believed the channels she listed had made to deserve to be silenced. One Jerusalem Post reader said, it is difficult for me to believe that a member of Knesset actually wants to shut down news outlets because she doesn't agree with them. It's even more difficult for me to see how many people uh, in the Jerusalem Post readers say agree with her um, another Jerusalem Post reader said we we're not supposed to agree or disagree with news outlets we're they're supposed to publish opinions on both sides of the argument um, another 
uh, Post reader said, Talk Olive has gone too far in wanting to shut down news channels, obviously, and as the previous commentator has said, because she doesn't agree with their views. The whole thing about news is that you're meant to present both sides of the story and give people an opportunity to hear both sides of the argument. Um, if you don't have both sides of the argument, then it's just a dictatorship issuing press releases. Larry Goldstein commented, this is the incorrect approach. The free marketplace of ideas require that people be permitted to speak their minds. If the statements are damaging, untrue and deliberate, their lawsuits for slander or libel are in order. But price censorship should uh, be used very sparingly and solely for security matters. In Israel, independent, objective journalism has disappeared during COVID uh, and has been replaced by the na mainstream narrative, uh, a balanced debate about COVID and other issues, lockdowns, etc. And I'll come on to some other issues about that, was, has been dead and gone and not changed over time. So this is a very serious issue is censorship because uh, the freedom to speak, the freedom of speech is a central tenet of a democracy. And, um, if, and we are Israel first. So if it's happening in Israel, then we need to be um, very cautious um, as to the future because censorship is a small, short way away from dictatorship. Uh, now, one other news story, and I think Natalie's got some things to share with us today. One other news story, just quickly, is just about the Nimbus computer system. I have talked about this before, but it's important for you to know what's happening, that in Israel, uh, everything is now on this Nimbus computer system. That's all the government's uh, departments, the departments of uh, the Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Transportation, Ministry of Education. It's a huge computer data machine giving the Israeli government very advanced artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities. And again, it's part of the big picture of the control and it's important that we see it as part of the puzzle that artificial intelligence will be part of this system of the one world government mm -hmm. uh, able they're able to control things because of uh, using AI uh, the massive 1.2 billion dollar Nimbus project uh, took over a year to set up Natalie and it's involved Israeli government ministries and other entities using servers in the Google Cloud data centers uh, there have been protests about Nimbus by Google employees one Google software engineer described it as uh, Israel trying to become a military, uh, Google, sorry, trying to become a military contractor, while another organizer urged employees to fight back and make sure the technology is used for good. Now, why is Nimbus such a problem? Why is this AI such an issue? Well, facial recognition, we mentioned that before. This is a big issue. Uh, facial recognition is even more serious maybe than uh, the technology of smartphones and tracking phones because whilst you could leave your phone at home you can't if you can't leave your face at home you, you it comes with you wherever you go so facial recognition technology is very serious for freedom it's very serious that um, that this technology exists mm -hmm. um, the intercept reported that secret documents revealed that Google has provided the Israeli government with a cloud system that gives Israel capabilities for facial detection, automated image categorization, object tracking, and even sentiment analysis that assesses the emotional content of photos, speech, and writing. In other words, they can see in real time how people are feeling according to the computer. Now, again, it depends on whether you know the, what the, how the computer assesses that. Uh, Ariel Corin, the marketing manager for Google's education products, said it is clear that the tools provided through Nimbus have the potential to expand Israel's pattern of surveillance, racial pro profiling and other forms of tech assisted human rights violations. The systems can discern inner feelings from one's face and statement. Uh, Google workers said they were concerned by their uh, employee 
us using this technology that it can have inaccuracies and can be used for surveillance and other purposes. So this is another part um, of the control, Natalie, that's the... Mm -hmm. uh, Which is interesting when you say that this is like the control by the face. Panim al panim is what we say, it's like face to face, when God loves to have face to face with us. And like again and again when we speak, it's about the relationship that he has with us. And we are all different. And again, this thing is like to control the people, but God is totally different. And some people say, well, why, why this, why that? Why does God allow all these things that are happening and all of that? But it's because if he loves us, he gives us the freedom to want him. If you, if you leave things more, if you control more the things, it means that he can't see the love that we have for him because it's like we're almost forced to love him which is totally the opposite of love. So God is hiding his face sometime because he wants us to go to him and find him. So he knows that we really love him <clears throat> and he's there so fast. He said that, like, you know, you do one little step and God does like 99% of, of the other thing, but sometimes it's hidden because we have to choose him. And this is very interesting because we are like coming into the feast of Shavuot, which is very often described in, in, our, in English, the, the, the feast of the weeks, which is a funny thing of to, uh, to say, is because Shavuot means weeks, but is also seven, Sheva, Sheva is seven, and so Shavuot comes also from that because it's the seven weeks after um, seven days of seven weeks. Okay, God is working with the number seven in everything, every pattern that we can see. We have seven days, so you have Passover, and then you have seven, seven days, seven, which is I bring to. Pentecost is 50 and uh, you can see it also in other things like the seven colors I mean you can see God's pattern is, is just amazing with seven so <clears throat> we are coming into um, Shavuot now and Shavuot was the time of the giving of the Torah in Sinai so God was giving his word Again, this is just amazing and we can speak about it like for, for so long, but I want to pick up a bit on this was when the word was given, but when we arrive at the time of Yeshua is when the Holy Spirit was given. So you can see the Torah and the Holy Spirit, which is like the bread and the wine, is like we need the Torah, we need the word of God, and we need the Spirit to really inspire us and make this word uh, on fire. And funny enough, when when the uh, apostles received, the disciples received, not just the apostles, sorry, it was the, the disciples, when they received the Holy Spirit, it was with tongue of fire because God is presenting himself in different ways. And so he's like burning his word in us with the spirit. And he said that, you will not have, you won't need anymore somebody to instruct you because it will be inside of you and it's like with fire. So there is, it's just amazing. There is so many things about that. But what I discovered, because when I was speaking with God this week, it was like, it's very important that we rejoice. In the midst of all the things that are happening, God is saying, enjoy life, rejoice, because Every little thing that God is giving us is Him, sometimes in a hidden way, but it's Him with His, like every day when we wake up is because the, the earth is still going around. 
the atmosphere is still there. And you know, when they speak about the climate change and all of that, this is just, this is so much rubbish. If you think this earth has been going around for a long time and is not going to change with the little thing that we are doing. No, is God who is behind all of that and his law has been put in place. And it's forever that the laws have been put in place. Now you can see variations, but it's going to stay because God say, I'm sustaining the earth and sustaining the Shemaim, the heavens, by my word. So we have to carry on trusting in him and not trusting in the new ways that they are saying that is wonderful. And we, you know, this is just like, so much rubbish seriously <laughs> now when we speak about like god was saying to the people israel because they were the one chosen to carry the word but in god's heart is always been it's not just for israel i love every individual on the earth and i want my torah i want my word given to everybody but you had to start from someone and so the Jewish people say, yes, we want to obey and we want to do it. So uh, God said, now I'm going to give you the very big responsibility to have the Torah and to bring this light to the nations. And it's coming. It's coming. It's, it's better than we were. Like sometimes we speak about bad things and all, but we are much better than it was before. There is much more light now on the earth than it was before. Now, also one thing that I wanted to say when we speak about the seven, the number seven, there is seven millennia. And like when and we spoke already about that, the first one was chaos, the second one was Torah. Sorry, the first two uh, millennia was chaos. Then it was with Abraham from the second to the fourth millennia. It was the Torah was given. Then Yeshua comes. Okay. And then we had two years, uh, sorry, two millennia of, um, of enlightenment with Yeshua, which was when he, when he came, he said, this is the end of the day. This was the beginning of the end of the days because it was starting to, to give his revelation to all the world, not just to the Jewish people, but for, for the entire world. So this was the beginning when Yeshua came when he said, and, and Yeshua say, we are in the end of the time. Achachit yamim. He said it a few times. And now, for us, we are at the end of the end of the time. Achachit yamim. And then, we will have the seven millennia. We will, it's like Shabbat, which will be when Yeshua will come to reign. When the Messiah will come and reign. So you see again this pattern of seven, and we are really at the end of the six millennia, and we're coming to go in the seven millennia, which will be Shabbat, which is peace, shalom, revelation, nature. He said how nature is eager to see his appearance. And it's interesting because this spring is so special here and this year, and I'm like, am I looking at things more specially? And I was speaking with a friend this morning and I say, I know she's also very sensitive spiritually. And I say, listen, do you think, can you see something different this year? Is spring different? Can you see the world different? Because I see it differently. And she said, listen, it's like abundance this year. And I said, this is interesting to say because I heard that there was a lot of honey this year. There is a lot of uh, blooming. And, and it's like, we have to see what God is doing. We have to see. And, and it's what he's saying. He said in, in Deuteronomy 16, 11, where they speak about this, the feast of the week, so Shavuot. And God say, uh, you have to rejoice in it. I mean, is that like, yeah is is that like, come on rejoice and it's like it's like a feast and god say enjoy the earth enjoy what i'm giving you enjoy just sing this is like when he was giving when they started to have shavuot 
it was the beginning of the Torah. This was the beginning of what God was doing. He's taking the time to unravel all the goodness and all the blessing that he has for us. And now, I mean, just think, Yeshua came and he died to make us being able to be close to God, that to, to have a relationship with the King of Kings, to have a relationship with our Creator. And after he said, I don't just do that. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. So he will be with you all the time. I was listening to somebody who died and came back. And somebody was asking, oh, see, it was a little child. And, uh, and the people were amazed of all the things that he knew already. Because it's like, when you go on the other side, there is knowledge, so much knowledge. And they were saying, but how do you understand the triune God? I say, God is in heaven, the Father. Yeshua came here and is with us. And they say, but where is the Holy Spirit? And they say, he's with you all the time. He's on earth. And he's like, exactly. This is the work that Yeshua finished. He gave us everything. We have the Torah. We have the Spirit. We have this beautiful earth that we have to enjoy. And we have to follow his commandment. This is what Yeshua said. Yeshua said, rejoice follow my commandments and you will make me rejoice so much with my father so we have everything everything to rejoice and and on earth as it is in heaven it's like he prepared everything spiritually they say i want you to enjoy the thing also on earth don't be just super spiritual enjoy the thing and this is what we've learned also with the jewish people is like you enjoy Shabbat, you enjoy to eat together, you enjoy the wine, you enjoy the bread, and you give a bracha, you give a blessing. So everything that you do, you give a blessing to God. It's like you connect with Him all the time this way. It's amazing. It's the part of the, the whole story is the, the, as all these things are happening in the world, uh, the creation is, gro is, is, cry is groaning, it says that in the Bible crying out uh, for the sons of God to be revealed. Exactly. So exactly. we're in those days uh, that the creation is, is crying out as these other events are happening all across the world. And uh, we'd really love to hear from you. If you'd like to contact us, our email address is info at israelfirst.org. And let us know what's happening where you are. Um, if you'd like to support us, we, we really appreciate that. That makes it possible for us to do these programs and come into your home and you can see all the information on the website we also do a weekly news story which you can get uh hold of and we're now on uh, it's, i'll have to get this right it's called substack and uh, you can um, sign up to substack and you can um, subscribe to our newsletter and help us that way as well even if you even if you don't um, pay a subscription on Substack to, to our newsletter. It still helps us that you subscribe. It's a very important way of us getting the news out and growing, uh, growing that uh, Substack account. Um, as I say, the website has a lot of information on it. Uh, the, the donation information. And we're on Rambol also, which yes. is important. You can subscribe us on Rambol because now sometimes we're on YouTube, but not all the time. And we really like Rambol because we can speak freely. Yeah. So subscribe right. us on Rambol so you can get it every every two weeks. And and that helps us as well because when we have enough subscribers on Rambol, we could also go live. So that would be great. And uh, well, we've really enjoyed being with you today. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And remember, we're the program that looks at the land, the people and the language. Music